Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Well, hi, awesome to have you all back on Human Humane Architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii, the show that is not giving up on uh, trying to find ways to keep our islands of Hawaii inclusive, which is increasingly problematic because it gets more and more exclusive and not affordable more for too many of us. So um, we've been talking about that actually from the very beginning, and if we can get the first slide, that was a show I did uh, a while ago um, here uh, about um, a project uh, that we do in school that is called Stratosphere and I Grove, which is a pop-up uh, installation inhabitable out of uh, found objects um, from the cargo shipping realm. And we had the chance to present that about a year ago. Uh, at must have been that time of the year on, on Earth Day, actually at Mark's Garage, which is one of the main hubs for the art scene here in Chinatown in Honolulu. And the next page is, um, it almost looks like it could be the same uh, guy, but it's not. It's, he's just as uh, bald and bold as, as I am. And that's today's guest who, um, has to do with that institution and uh, was and the uh, associate director of Mark's Garage. He has also been uh, on this show with Donna Blanchard way back, as you can see at the very top right. But it took until uh, next page, uh, the emerging generation of architects got us together and got us up to uh, uh, Rich Richardson uh, next phase in his life, and to share that with us, he's here today. Hi, Rich. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate that very much. Thank you for being here. And so um, the students, uh, we, we're doing a studio that the students are in charge of uh, orchestrating every other week at what we call an XP day, which is both experiential and expedition, so they go out and about and find things relative to the design task. And the design task is nothing more and nothing less to make the most with the least, especially for these people who are in such urgent need. And that's exactly what you're doing in this exciting new phase in your life. And um, if we can get the, that page, this is us uh, on, uh, on your lanai, right, at home. So what, what, what are you doing up at home? Because you've been the fancy sort of uh, art director and manager up in Chinatown, being busy running around. And what are you doing up there at home in your valley? Well, I, I decided to do something uh, on my own for a little while, at, at least, um, that was um, proactive, addressing some concerns that we, we all share, I think, on Oahu. Um, providing affordable housing. I figured I could approach it as an art project and uh, rebuild um, uh, my own life, uh, a little bit less social perhaps, being up there alone in the valley, banging away uh, with hammer and nails on this project. But um, nonetheless, I think um, in, important reinvigorating and um, and uh, feels very good to mm -hmm. have accomplished. And let's bring up the next slide because that shows a, sort of a selection of inspirations you had, sort of where you came from, what, what inspired you. And it's a, it's a movement that's known actually national talking TV on national mm -hmm. TV. It's called Tiny Homes. So right. it's this awareness of that we can you know, live on a smaller footprint that would benefit us in multiple ways. Last but not at all least, what's most problematic on the island is the mm -hmm. affordability issue, right? So these are just examples right. of uh, what inspired you, right? Right. And as I understood, you were you were in Chinatown, which is pretty much out there, and it's very much on on in front of your doors. You're confronted with the issues because the rising homelessness right. is is there. And as I understood you, you were feeling a little bit too sort of you felt awkward in sitting, you know, at your nice desk with your Apple computer and yeah. pushing buttons while out there 
struggle was going on, right? Existential struggle. It's right. Is that correct? So you, you ask yourself, um, well, what can I do? Mm -hmm. what, what can one person do um, to stem the tide of global capitalism? Yeah. I, how, you know, how can one person make a mm -hmm. difference? And I thought, well, maybe I can make something that somebody could live in. Yeah. So I started with that premise. Mm -hmm. I can build something. I've built a lot of artwork in my life. I could build an artwork large enough for somebody to, to sleep in, to yeah. dwell in. Yeah. So my first uh, instinct was something um, uh, maybe uh, improvised, mm -hmm. improvised structure made from found materials. Uh -huh. and, uh -huh. and then I dug into it, doing some research, found um, a whole world out there to explore and very exciting. Those are English shepherd's huts that you see on, yeah. on the pictures. Yeah, yeah. So let's go to the next page, which addresses another issue, because what you just said, I would call it the art of dwelling that you try to recreate on the island because many of us lose it. There was actually, I was watching TV here, public TV, and I saw our founding father, Jay Fidel, in the audience, and they were mm -hmm. discussing, you know, that the brain drain on the island, that many of the talented young people have to move away because they just can't afford to live here, right? So then there is, there is something that sort of society came up with sort of intentionally or viciously, you know, clever, that's called the ADU, the accessory dwelling unit, which mm -hmm. means you can put little units in your backyard. But that sounds great, but it's not that easy. easy right. And, and it's sort of iffy. And so you went another route, and I was sort of a subtitle of, of the show, or actually the show of the title, I call it uh, Riches um, Cabana Mobilier mm -hmm. uh, for the poor, in brackets for the real rich. And, mm -hmm. and, and Mobilier comes from the European terminology where real estate is called in French immobilier or in mm -hmm. Germany immobilia. Mm -hmm. And it means it's something that's not mobile. Mm -hmm. While here, your trick is to do the opposite, to put it on wheels, right? Right. I think these were born of that um, disaster in New Orleans, uh, Katrina, where the Americans um, involved in that were met with these FEMA trailers that mm. were toxic and, yeah. you know, square and um, some inventors out there decided they could do better. Mm -hmm. And this tiny house movement, I think, is mm -hmm. born of that instinct. Okay, yeah. this is all I need. Yeah but I can make it great. Yeah. I can make it really fun to live in. It doesn't Absolutely. have to be something just utilitarian yeah. to get me yeah. by. I can want to be here. Yeah, and let's jump right in because you had to start with from the very beginning. And so the next picture is you uh, looking for the chassis for the foundation, for the mobile foundation. And you told me you had to look for it somewhere. It came from the mainland via the big island and then finally to you. So you started pretty much with that. That's sort of your foundation, right, on wheels. Yeah, the project has uh, taken me down so many avenues. Mm -hmm. the, finding the, the trailer yeah. um, shipped from, te built in Texas, shipped mm -hmm. um, in a container yeah. uh, across the country on a train to Oakland, shipped uh, to the big island and then back on the barge to yeah, Oahu yeah. where I picked it up. My Subaru wasn't going to pull it, so I had to buy this big old truck. Yeah, yeah. And so just starting at the, the very, um, very yeah. lowest level of uh, how, do I, how do I make this happen? Yeah. And the next picture is that's when you started, actually. So you were building on the foundation and basically sort of leveling it and putting, out, putting on the, uh, the first layers that are needed to, for inhabitation. And we should say that while you started out and saying, I make something you know, artsy and crazy, through the process of saying, I want this to be my life, you basically said, well, this, this has to work. It has to be professional. It has to right. be up to codes and standards. So it would be accessible and legal, right? right? So you yeah. started to get uh, pretty serious, right, along the lines of right. building. I'm you know, improv Im impro improvising all the time. Yeah. I've, I've thought I would love to build something wild, like a tree fort, mm -hmm. with fun doodads hanging off yeah. <laughs> everywhere. But I realized, uh, reading this uh, literature on, on these tiny houses, that to do it right, you really have to know how to build well. Yeah. Otherwise, people won't trust mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's a safe place. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's where I got into the nitty gritty and yeah. taught myself how to build to yeah. international building code. OK, and let's look at that, because the next picture illustrates that, that all of a sudden there's framing going on that's been put on the trailer. Mm -hmm. And the next picture is uh, the framing in process here. and. Uh, 
also you started out saying, well, I'm, I'm out there by myself, um, mm -hmm. but you're not, right? Because we see someone in there who's with you, at least. Right. Yeah, my daughter's there. Uh, she's part of the crew. That's her with a chainsaw or a <laughs> nail gun or something. <laughs> <laughs> and we were so saying, isn't that beautiful? Because what makes construction <laughs> so painful here is like unions and, and safety and, and close-toed uh, close, uh, shoes and yeah. helmets and stuff like that. I don't see that here so yeah. much. And she's still happy and healthy and alive, right? Oh, yeah. And, and then you were also saying this extends beyond because there's a house in the back on that right mm -hmm. picture. There's a neighbor who's chipping in with his, like, what do you say, 40 years of experience in the construction industry? Right. I had people checking on me, people offering to help. I wanted to do everything um, by myself, mm -hmm. um, just at least the first one. Yeah. To really learn it from the from the ground yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had uh, I have one guy who stops by and and helps me um, with my most difficult questions uh -huh. for the week. Yeah. Very and, very. Helpful. And most difficult is the next brings us to the next page here because you said while you wanted to be really sort of you know affordable and efficient and effective, being the artist you are, you didn't want to give up and you didn't want to make it a plain and boring sort of FEMA box, which you already said. You mm -hmm, wanted to mm -hmm. make it the art of dwelling, as we call it. So you said mm -hmm. this vaulted ceiling was important for you and was was worth investing, literally and figuratively speaking. So here right. you're basically materializing that dream, right, and making that Right, I, I'm le learning how to build uh, for that, that fixation of mine, that arched yeah. um, uh, ceiling, uh, took a lot of uh, research and experimentation yeah, yeah. that I think paid off because it does feel very, very roomy inside. Yeah. And it changes it to something poetic rather mm -hmm. than something just functional. Yeah. Uh, it makes me really want to be in there and not, I, I can survive uh -huh. in here, but yeah. more, I, I aspire to, I, yeah. to be here. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. so let's look at the fancy shop where this is all happening and coming together. Mm -hmm. Next picture here, right? This is pretty much your carport lanai, which is the extension of a little shop you have in the back, and oh, that's great. where you work and yeah, live and mm -hmm. all of that. Perfect. Yeah. And next picture is where you basically then sort of the the genie in the bottle that you let out, you know, that vaulted mm -hmm. roof meant yeah. to bend, basically corrugated metal. So you needed to do that, and you figured out how to do it. You sort of trained well, yourself and entrepreneurial. And I tried, but I what, what I found was a guy in Kalihi mm -hmm. at a machine shop yeah. who remembered how to bend metal for Quonset hut repairs. Which is another great precedent for that sort of simple dwelling, right? Right. Another, yeah, and I lived in one for five years, so I love the sound awesome. of rain on those yeah, structures. Yeah, that's poetic, talking uh, poetic, right? Sing, single layer, single layer uh -huh. uh, membrane. Yeah. Um, you couldn't talk on the phone yeah. in the Quonset hut yeah. uh, when it rained really yeah. hard. You know, uh -huh. it's just too loud in there. But, no, yeah. but a beautiful shape, and uh, luckily these guys helped me out and bent that um, mm -hmm. to, to perfection. Yeah. So. No. And next page is finally sort of the the raw form is finished and you know the vaulted roof and you're proudly there and 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 sort of celebrating uh, the the main construction being completed. And next picture once again celebrating with you are these awesome construction workers here who uh, <laughs> you know kept you uh, you know you said it was. Uh, it was it was quite the struggle, and and I said, well, you know, you are an artist, and you approach us as an artist, and isn't that what art is about? There is no art without struggle. So I mean, you know, yeah. and, and you're what, what I find amazing is that you you didn't approach this like from the end from the product. You didn't say, well, I want to get rich, playing a word game with your name mm -hmm, once right. again by doing this, but you said, I want to engage in the process. I want it to be a lifestyle change for myself. Right. So the process was as important, maybe more important than the product, right? Or the product is an outcome of that sort of engaged process. Yeah, I wanted to create a lifestyle for myself. Um, and the product is secondary. The, the process was like a dance the first six months. I really enjoyed the, the, the physical work, mm -hmm. uh, the framing especially. Building that boat-like uh, shape for the top yeah. was really gratifying. Yeah, yeah. Um, figuring out uh, every step became uh, the most difficult part for me, as the learning curve was yeah. was struggling with. Yeah. You know, each thing being new to me, uh -huh. and um, now that I've basically gotten through it. Um, yeah. No, uh, and take a little closer look. I mean, the little picture I put in because I was, 
you know, popping my head below under your trailer and was mm. taking that picture of that sort of clarity of construction, I would call it, that sort of logic. And next picture is the same in the raw construction of the building. So um, everything is, is serious and it's a double wall construction and it's insulated, which came after, mm -hmm. you know, this stage here. So uh, we, we should point out that this is, uh, this is an easy breezy cabana, how I call it. This is mm -hmm. naturally ventilated. There is no AC in there. And you put just the right amount of fenestrations in there that mm -hmm. it pretty much works. And you can get the wind doing the job. And it's well insulated, so it, it doesn't overheat. And the little picture in that, on that page here is, is me when you opened up the facility room, mm -hmm. which is sort of backpacked to the, to the thing. Mm -hmm. and, and there you can see a rainwater collector, and you can see um, the other sort of technical necessities you pretty much have. And mm -hmm. also you said, you know, you, you want to have the thing be off the grid, so you want to have it self-sustained. So you were thinking about the photovoltaics to be on the roof, but looking at some precedents, you decided basically to have it you have the, the, the owner basically place it outside of the house where the sun is, for sure, mm -hmm. and sort of not have it it's sort of centralized and integrated into the roof, but being sort of decentralized and, and that way. But again, it's, it's an own sort of self-sustained sort of unit that, again, I mean, I'm amazed, you know, you, you had no training, no pre-education, you had to figure this all by yourself and, and you did it. You know? Well, thank you. The, the industry is very uh, giving at this point. There's a lot of people that are experimenting and sharing the mm -hmm. lessons learned, mm -hmm. um, which makes it very exciting, kind of a pioneering yeah. Yeah. spirit oh, yeah. and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, there's yeah. an open source um, yeah. exchange of ideas and, and techniques. Yeah. Yeah. For the layperson, uh -huh. very important. Um, you know, do it yourself plumbing, yeah. do it yeah, yourself yeah. Solar paneling, do it yourself. Yeah. Um, water cat, rainwater catchment. Yeah, yeah. You know, everything's learned from the ground up, and and it's all systems that you would find in a normal uh -huh. dwelling yeah. at a smaller scale. Yeah. And so that being said, let's jump to the next image here, which shows the product with a fish eye view, and it's uh, basically you said it's 110 square foot, right? Interior. Yeah. Interior wise. Mm -hmm. And it's got everything you need. You got that, and you you insisted to make a compromise between you know your your artsy potential and your talent and ability to make things really crazy and uh, and and the sort of uh, uh, sort of expectations and taste of potential users. Mm -hmm. And you you decided to keep it as clean as possible as sort mm -hmm. of to make this compromise as a for now for the prototype. But nevertheless, if we go to the next page, because we're looking into the sort of the living sleeping area, this is your bed that has this feature of can be pulled out and can made, be made much wider and to basically house, host you know, yourself and your two kids. And, and then you can push it back and it has storage underneath. And mm -hmm. the next fish eye view is looking the other direction, which basically has at the very end, which we see on the next page, uh, a full uh, shower and a full toilet, which mm -hmm. is a, a compost uh, toilet that's basically um, used on yachts and, and ships and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So all technology yeah. that has proven to basically work. Mm -hmm. So the thing pretty much has everything that you need for life, and and that's the that's the beauty of it. We're sort of running out of time, so I want to put you into a context of um, body of work and, and colleagues. Uh, to make you feel even better than you already should, because I'm <laughs> proud of you. And the next page is uh, one of our previous guests who we had already multiple times, and this is uh, Nathan Toothman. And I come to that sort of for my profession and discipline, a shocking uh, insight that I realized that actually the best kind of architecture on the islands is made by non-architects, as you are an artist. And Nathan and Tiffany are nuclear naval engineers, and they came up with this idea same, again, lifestyle, the whole family is involved. If mm -hmm. I send you the links to the shows, you will be surprised about the mentality of, of, of mindset um, of, of being a family project here, and it's called Elevate, and it's, it's due to do an update, so you guys be excited about an update in a couple of weeks. And uh, as close to me, the next page is uh, my own family, because uh, my son Joey, uh, who has uh, a fresh uh, master's degree in automotive engineering and management, decided also to not sit behind the table and push papers, 
Mm -hmm. but basically create his own uh, dream and striking similarity. Wow, he started nice. with a trailer mm -hmm. and he and he built a, a box and, and then he started to um, cocoon it. Uh, and, and so here, here they are. And uh, DeSoto Brown in a previous show and then Nathan, who has been consulting, called it uh, an Aloha ambassadorship because he's doing all this in Germany, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's all the three of you are doing the same sort of mindset and thinking and and here, you know, Joey, it's Joey and my uh, daughter-in-law's project and, and vision and dream. And, you know, the whole families are involved and behind it. And um, it's refreshing to see to, uh, you know, not allowing oneself to be victimized by sort of the systems in place of that you can't afford home ownership anymore. And mm -hmm. you have to, again, in worst case, to move off island. Uh, but that there is a way, if there's a will, there's a way. And you guys demonstrate that to an absolute beauty. And if you see that little surfboard that they designed to mm -hmm. be the signage, that gets me to the last page, uh, which is, again, I encourage, uh, I encourage potential buyers uh, to love it and to want it, and then to sort of approach you uh, increasingly as in your initial capacity of the artist and mm -hmm. saying, how can we now sort of go more crazy again? I mean, this was mm -hmm. sort of the foot in the door, I think, which is mm -hmm. great that you did it that way. And now is the time to basically create, I will say again, like a family, you know, a large family in Ohana where mm -hmm. each kid in the family is different uh -huh. enough and has different character based upon mm -hmm. whatever, right? So I. I encourage them to do that. And again, I want to, I don't want to thank you to uh, have made this sort of significant change in your life and, and being so courageous and brave to do that and sitting here and smiling and I can see the excitement <laughs> and I, I know that this excitement is contagious. So um, again, if you people are interested, uh, please go on Rich's website, which you can see here. And then, you know, him having designed a total piece of artwork, if the camera can get to my hand here where I'm holding your business card, and your business card is as your project is, it's tiny, and it's very well uh, crafted, um, and it's basically um, about art, right? That says it yeah. at the title, you the know, at the thing. subtitle. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, art you can live in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So thank you for having been here and shared that with us. Thank and you for having me on the I, show. I wish you all the best and it. we will watch you and then have you on the show again when mm -hmm. the first crazy ones have joined, you know, in mm -hmm. the family, the crazy mm -hmm. kids came mm -hmm. to play along and, and then we want to give, give an update on that until yeah, then. Yeah, we'll have a village of them. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. You were talking about that little wagon, you know. Circle of wagons. Circle around yeah. the mm -hmm. fire in the fire middle. Fire pit, yeah. You know, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, so thank you very much, Rich, mm -hmm. again, very encouraging. And um, so we will be back next week with DeSoto Brown and our volume two of our trilogy about the architecture of UH Manoa. And it will be the Thrive episode or the Boom episode or the Jetsons episode, as DeSoto calls it. So stay tuned for that. And until then, um, Stay little and tiny, and but think big. Bye-bye.